So are you a Marvel or a DC fan? I hear this question all the time, as if you can't be a fan of both. As an aside, I've been pegged as a DC fan, and I guess that's right, but it wasn't always the case. But that, my friends, is for another video. I have an extensive comic book collection from the 1960s that I bought as a kid, and still have to this date. I've been showing them off in a series that I call The Comics My Mom Let Me Keep. Now, most of these comics are raw, not graded, and probably mid to low grade. I bought most of these comic books for 10 or 12 cents. So I began thinking, which of these should I get graded to increase the value? And I began researching the relative value of DC and Marvel comics from the 1960s. I thought you might like to see what I came up with. Stay tuned for the first of the 10 part series, DC vs. Marvel, the 1960s Battle of the Comic Book Values. Hi comic book guys and gals, I'm Joe and welcome to Anachronic Comics. Now I'm going through each comic issued by DC and Marvel in the 1960s to determine their relative values in an effort to determine which comics I own that I should grade. As you might imagine, some comics don't have many sales in the 1960s, especially the early 1960s. In fact, some I've researched have no sales on CGC or CBCS. Once I went through the values, I started to wonder how the two companies compared by taking each comic issued in the 1960s and determining an appropriate value today. Now, each takes lots of time to do. And uh, literally hundreds of comic books to review, to look up, and sometimes I have to calculate a value. So for purposes of this series, and to make each video less than two hours, I'm limiting the information to the top 10 valuable comic books from each year, using information that I've taken from Go Collect. So first, let me give you the parameters. Now, I know that comics in my collection won't be high grade, but really, who wants to see the values of a 1.0 in a video? So for this video, I decided to simply take the highest grade listed on Go Collect that has sales parameters. So if the comic book has a listed fair market value, that's the dollar figure that I used. But if the fair market value was not listed, I took the one year average sales data if available. If neither the FMV or one year average sales data was available, I took the most recent sale and used that number if the sale was within the last year. If not, I took the most recent sales data and used the updated value. For example, a book that sold for $1,000 in 2019 would have an updated value of $1,139. Also, to simplify matters for me, I used the cover date rather than the publication date. One word on Marvel in the 1960s. Marvel was actually Atlas Comics during the beginning of the decade. The Fantastic Four ushered in the Marvel Age with its issue number one in 1961, and other heroes added during the early 1960s. Now, part of that, Marvel published mostly horror, science fiction, westerns, and lovelorn comic books. Yet, on my first top 10 list from 1960, although DC dominates, Marvel did break into the top 10 with two entries. So let's take a look at the top 10. So number 10 is Batman, volume one, number 129, with a cover date of February 1960, which comes in at $11,000 for a grade of 9.4. Now, there weren't very many 9.4s, but there's a total of 123 universal grades in the census for this book, all grades. Now, this is the only comic book in the top 10 with an FMV. The cover art is by Sheldon Muldoff, and it has three stories featuring Batman and Robin, with the cover story, The Web of the Spinner, written by Bill Finger and penciled by Muldoff. Also, it featured Batwoman. Now, it's the second story, also written by Finger and penciled by Muldoff, which makes this comic book a key. The story, entitled The Man from Robin's Past, 
retells the origin of Robin. Number 9 is Flash, Volume 1, Number 111, with a cover date of March 1960, which comes in at $13,725 for a grade of 9.4. Again, not many 9.4s, but a total of 137 universal grades for this book. This is the only comic book in the top 10 that is not listed as a key on Key Collector app. The cover art is by Carmine Infantino and Joe Jella. The value for this book comes in from the second story, The Challenge of the Crimson Crows, in which Kid Flash, Wally West, makes his second appearance. Number 8 is another Flash, Volume 1, Number 114, with a cover date of August 1960. This comic comes in at $17,925 for a grade of 9.4. There were a total of 157 graded comic books for this issue. The cover art is by Carmine Infantino and Joe Jella. The cover story, The Big Freeze, makes this a key because it features the second appearance of Captain Cold. At number 7, we find the first Marvel slash Atlas book, Tales to Astonish Volume 1, number 13, with a cover date of November 1960, which comes in at $18,644 for a 9.2. Um, the cover story, I Challenged Groot, the monster from Planet X, makes this a key. It's a key issue with the first appearance of Groot. Now, the cover and story art was by Jack Kirby, with the plot by Stan Lee, and the script by Larry Lieber. Number six is showcase number 24 from February of 1960, featuring Hal Jordan as the Green Lantern. This comic book comes in at $19,091. The cover art is by Gil Kane, with inks by Joe Jella, who also did the art for the cover story. The cover story was written by John Broom, the creature that couldn't die. This issue is a key, featuring the third appearance of both Hal Jordan's Green Lantern and Carol Ferris. Now, Green Lantern earned his own book, and both Hal and Carol made their next appearances in Green Lantern number one. Now, if you're a fan of the Silver Age, you already know that the top five most valuable comic books of 1960 are dominated by the Justice League of America, with four of the top five books. Number five is Brave and the Bold number 30, the third appearance of the JLA, with a cover date of July 1960. It comes in at $21,280 for a 9.2. The cover art is credited to Mike Sikowski, Pencils and Murphy Anderson inks. The story, The Case of the Stolen Powers, was written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Mike Sikowski. Now, this is a key issue not only because of the third appearance of the Justice League of America, but also the first appearance of Amazo, the android, and Professor Ivo. At number four, we have the second Marvel Atlas comic book. Rawhide Kid number 17 with a cover date of August 1960, which comes in at $23,485 for a 9.4. The cover art was by Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers. The cover story, Beware the Rawhide Kid, features the first appearance of the second Rawhide Kid, Johnny Clay. The story was written by Stan Lee with pencils by Jack Kirby. Number three is Brave and the Bold number 29 with a cover date of May 1960. It comes in at $47,095 with 49.4. The cover art was by Mike Sikowski and Murphy Anderson. The story, Challenge of the Weapons Master, was written by Gardner Fox with pencils by Sikowski. Now it's a key issue featuring the second appearance of the Justice League of America, and the first appearance of Zotar the Weapons Master. Now I thought numbers one and two would be reversed. Shows how much I know. Number two on the list of the top 10 most valuable DC and Marvel comics of 1960 is Brave and the Bull number 28 with a cover date of March 1960, 
featuring the very first appearance of the Justice League of America, as well as the first appearance of Starro the Conqueror. Now it comes in at $93,870 for a grade of 9.4. The cover art, like the other Brave and the Bold issues, is by Sikowski and Anderson. The story, Starro the Conqueror, was written by Gardner Fox with pencils by Sikowski. Now, we're finally getting to the number one most valuable DC and Marvel comic book of 1960. You guessed it, Justice League of America number one, with a cover date of November 1960. It comes in at a whopping $249,905 for a 9.6 graded copy. There are a total of 1,262 copies at all grades in the census. This key issue is the first solo titled Justice League of America series and the first appearance of Despero. The cover art was by Murphy Anderson and the story was by Gardner Fox with the interior art by Mike Sikowski. So as anticipated, DC wins the match for 1960 with eight books totaling $473,891 in value, while Atlas Marvel has two books with a total of $42,129 in value. As I mentioned, 1961 will see the Fantastic Four added to the Marvel list, so the results may be different. We'll see in Episode 2 of DC vs. Marvel. A postscript to this list. As many of you know, I am in the process of trying to complete my Justice League of America Volume 1 run. Of the four Justice League related comics on the list, I do not have Brave and the Bold number 28. Not sure if I'm ever going to get that one. I'm looking for a low grade copy that I can afford to complete the run. Recently, a 1.0 sold for $2,400, a bit above the FMV of $2,250. I was also hoping to pick up a Justice League of America number one since the one in my collection that I bought as a kid has no cover. Yes, I wish I knew where the cover went, but I don't. Recently, an issue graded 2.5 sold for $1,295, slightly above the FMV of $1,200. My copy of Raven the Bowl 29 has not been graded, but may not be better than a 3.0 which has an FMV of $450. Brave and the Bold number 30 has been graded by CGC at a 2.5 and currently has an FMV of $210. Now, if you're interested in seeing the comic books my mom let me keep, which is the bulk of my Silver Rage collection, click here for the series and click here to see my birthday collection of January 1951 comic books. Thanks for watching. Be well and I'll see you soon.